Hi guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another lighting episode. We are going over Arnold lights. In previous tutorials, we have gone over the legacy lights provided by uh, Maya, which you can find under Create Lights. There's a bunch of them here. And this time though, we're going over Arnold lights under Arnold lights and we have a bunch of them here. Previous tutorials, I've gone over sky dome, photometric lights, physical lights. Today we're gonna go over the area light. Arnold provides a very diverse light that can be used for multiple purposes and the area lights is the one you wanna use. Let's take a look at the area lights. So let's trigger that. By the way, just to let you know that under create lights, there is an area light provided by the legacy Maya lights. You wanna probably use this one if you're rendering in Arnold. All right, so what we see is this little square and a little line sticking out of it. And that means that is the direction of the light. So let's see what that looks like. Not very much is going on. So what's cool about the area light is that it gives you a nice square reflection and it's based on a couple of things. The bigger the light, the more, of course, it's going to reflect. So you need to be careful with that. So I'm going to take this light and rotate it. And just to make sure I get it accurate, I'm going to come over here and just go ahead and plug in some values. So, all right, so we'll bring this up just to uh, take a look. and it should be flush to the ground. So let me just rotate this a little bit, maybe zoom out a little bit so we can get a bigger, whoops, bigger look, okay. By the way, you can download this scene at academicphoenixplus.com. I'm gonna, so we don't see very much. And as we scale, you'll notice that the light kind of diffuses here and, but it doesn't really impact the intensity of the light. So looking at the area lights attributes, um, let's start going just down the list. The first one is color. Color as always is if you wanna change the light to red or green or blue, you can right here. It's a little hard to see, so let's go ahead and move on to the next one, which is intensity. Intensity is how intense is your light? Do you want it to be stronger, for example? In this scenario, you probably do. So let's crank it up to 50. Okay, now we're finally seeing something. Notice the huge reflection over here. Uh, the other one is exposure. This actually um, takes this value, the intensity value, and then increases it by exponentially. So if I put in a two, it's actually like 50 times 50. So um, you gotta keep that in mind that this will increase your light intensity exponentially. Uh, using color temperature is always fun. By using Calvin temperature, you can either decrease the color uh, to a lower temperature, which makes it a little bit warmer, kind of like candlelight or uh, like a lamp, even all the way to red, or you can always make it warmer or hotter in the Kelvin and it will make it actually blue. So yeah, so it's pretty, pretty cool. So let's change it to a little bit blue. Um, illuminate by default just means you want this on or off. I personally want it on. And then there's this really neat little pull down menu called light shape. Right now it is a quad, but you can change it into a cylinder, which gives you this interesting appearance. So let me just kind of scale it down a little bit so you can see that it's giving you an interesting appearance. So let me kind of, so you can see the type of uh, illumination it's having on the scene. So I can scale this down a little bit more and just kind of stretch it out. So notice the impact it has on the highlights as well as on the light. So it spreads it out in a cylindrical way. And we also have this thing called a disc. So notice how the light has changed. Uh, this is actually emitting light based on the shape of the disc, a shape of a disc. So it's pretty neat if you wanna create uh, lighting instead of a square, you get a nice little circular highlight. Let's go back to quad just because um, that's the default. Then we have spread. Spread right now is at default of one. And if I start decreasing it, notice that it starts reducing the spread of the light, but also notice that it makes it more intense. So this is a way of, until you get a, a like an interesting rectangle, but it's up to you what you wanna use that way for. But again, this is a way of controlling your light. Um, we're not really using a texture where that's where resolution would come in. So if you are attaching, let's say an HDR image here, which by the way you can, um, the, you would plug in the resolution here. So roundness is, uh, is going to affect how rounded is the corner. So I might have to zoom in here to this object to be able to see the impact of it. But if I increase my roundness, you're gonna notice that this 
the corners of the light is starting to change its shape until I can almost get a, a spherical appearance. So again, this is just giving you a control over the light source itself. Like what shape do you want it? Do you want it to be a square or do you want it to be a rectangle? Soft edges is very similar. It actually softens the edges for you. So again, if I start increasing it, notice how it softens the edge. So with a mix of the roundness and the soft edges, you're going to get some nice changes in your lights. So let's go back to default. As we talked about previous lights, samples is how many samples you want the light to, uh, to render in the shadows. Notice the noise. You probably to reduce the noise, you increase the number of samples in your light. Now remember that it's not just the samples in the light, it is also your render settings. So you crank up the values uh, when you're ready to go. So let's say samples is three. So my renders are going to slow down, but the quality of the render is going to be significantly higher. So I click on one one, it gives it back to here. So you don't have to zoom in and out. All right. The big one is normalize. Notice how the intense the light is at this time. Right now it's at 50 and the exposure is three. Normalize means that it will use the scale of the light to actually illuminate the environment. So I'm going to turn this off and notice how intense the light is. And that's because it's based on the scale. So if I reduce, make my little light smaller, but have very high intensity and no normalize, you'll notice that it's really pretty light. But if I increase it as what I had before, let's say I want, it, whoops, lost my scene. There we go. And the light is now looks like they're facing backwards Undo. It's really intense. So let's go back to our default intensity, which is one and zero. So I am going to increase the size of this light. So again, the scale, uh, the highlight is going to be really extreme, but notice that uh, the lighting is also affected. So it really depends what type of effect you want. Um, cast shadows is um, exactly what it says. And I can tell that um, I've lost my shadow. So let me just go ahead and close this off and then turn it back on just because I have a feeling it's uh it has some challenges there arnold that's okay usually you can just solve it by closing it or open it or doing control u which is um, reset um over here you've got i keep forgetting about this update full scene it will update it so notice that we have shadows you can also turn off cast shadows or you can turn it back on so that works too and our shadow density is how dense do you want the shadows do you want them to be 100 percent which is accurate, or do you want it to actually be less? It really depends what type of look you want on your scene. And finally, shadow color. Shadow color means that uh, you can use red or change the color to whatever you want. Some people actually use shadow color to give the environment just a little, the shadows just a little bit of a color so that it looks more realistic. I'm gonna keep it at black at default. If we were using fog, which you guys can see in one of my uh, video tutorials, I go over fog. This is where volumetric shadows would work. So if you want to add fog to your scene, again, you can look at a previous tutorial. It would uh, it goes over that and this is how you turn it on or turn it off or give it more sample so it's not so noisy. Scrolling down, we have visibility. Visibility is uh, how much do you want this light to actually impact your diffuse, which is the color. So if I start decreasing it to zero, you'll notice that I just get the highlights, which is the specularity. So if you needed to create some, let's say your director wanted you to have this type of highlight, but wanted the shadows to be in a different direction, then you would duplicate the light, have one that does diffuse and one that does specular. So it gives you control and only that it gives you a gradient like a, a slider, which is awesome. Specularity means that if you don't want any specularity, you don't get it, or you can just get a little bit. It's really up to you. Again, Arnold is all about giving you control. We don't have any subsurface in the scene, so we're skipping that, but if you did, you could control it. And there's also indirect lighting. So if I zoom in a little bit here, um, there is a little bit of a, maybe I should zoom in, whoops. Let me zoom in here. Yeah, let me click one one. Cool. So if I have indirect lighting and I turn it off, basically that means that you're not really going to get any bounce lights anymore. You're just going to get the shadow and that's it. So if I crank it back up, 
you'll see that it's the colors of the bounce lights and everything kind of bounce around and gives you color. In this case, it'll be just completely black. And then there's volume. Again, it's about uh, volumetric shadows. If you want to uh, have control over it, how much it has, then um, how much of the light impacts the volume, then that would be the way to control it. All right, that was the area light. The next part is to talk about the interesting things that Arnold provides in the area light and other lights, which is called the light filters. That is going to be in the next tutorial. Again, thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate your support. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave comments below. And also don't forget to check out academicphoenixplus.com for free downloads, uh, more tutorials, and other updates. Thank you again, and I will see you next time.